They've got the attitude, the looks, and the offbeat tastes to match, even if some of them came before the word existed. May I make you dinner? No, thank you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hipsters in movies. So if this was a touching romantic story, our eyes would meet, and suddenly we would be furiously making out with the fire of a thousand suns. But this isn't a touching romantic story. Anyway. Yep. For this list, we're taking a look at characters who represent what some would call a hipster based on their interest in things that aren't necessarily part of the cultural mainstream, their belief in independent thought, and their lifestyle. Well. If my cathedral of cutting-edge taste holds no interest for your tragically Canadian sensibilities, then I shall be forced to grant you a swift exit from the premises. Number 10, Oliver Tate, Submarine. Most people think of themselves as individuals, that there's no one on the planet like them. This thought motivates them to get out of bed, eat food, and walk around like nothing's wrong. At 15 years old, his character might seem a little too young to be a hipster, but his sophisticated tastes suggest otherwise. I often imagine how people would react to my death. This film centers on the young Welsh schoolboy trying to save his parents' marriage, while attempting to woo his classmate Jordana. He does so while looking like a pretty cool young lad even if he's not the coolest in school. But I often read the dictionary. My word for today is flagitious, which means wickedly shameful. The precocious youngster goes through his relationship with a pretty rad mixtape his dad gives him, for the highs and the lows. It's like you're trying to get to heaven in a hurry When the queue was shorter than you thought it'd be And the doorman says you need to get a wristband Number 9, Annie Hall. Hi. 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 Oh, hi. Sure, this movie came out way before anyone really knew what a hipster was, and Diane Keaton's character in Manhattan was also considered for this list. It's just, I don't, it's crazy, it's crazy. But Annie Hall arguably helped define it for movie characters. You could even say she was the first real hipster in a movie, or in anything. Oh, come on, look who's talking. You've been seeing a psychiatrist for 15 years. Whether it's her tie and vest, her transformation into an independent woman, or her nervous romance with Woody Allen. 15 years, huh? 15 years, yeah. <laughs> oh. God bless. <laughs> It all makes for a character that appeals to hipsters and movie aficionados alike. And Alvy, and then I told her about how I didn't think you'd ever really take me seriously because you don't think that I'm smart enough. Number eight, Calvin Weirfields, Ruby Sparks. What does this thing even do? It turns you into a guy. Ruby herself was also considered for this list, but no character in this quirky romantic comedy is more of a hipster than Calvin. Paul Dano plays this novelist, who creates his perfect woman, a character he writes that eventually starts actually existing in the real world, outside of Calvin's imagination. Your dog, she's so cute. Oh, he's a boy dog. He just peed like a girl. Have we met before? Like many movie hipsters, Calvin thinks that shared interests are enough fodder for a successful relationship. No. No, that's not, I, I just wanted someone to talk to. Oh. In terms of his style, though, Calvin's got the glasses, the hair, the attitude, and a manual typewriter to boot, making him a hipster writer extraordinaire. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Number seven, Francis Halliday, Francis Ha. I love you, Sophie even if you love your phone that has email more than you love me. As this movie's titular character shifts from apartment to apartment, in both New York City and other parts of the world, like Paris, she also tries to find a stable job and boyfriend. Why not just get one cat? A cat needs a buddy. If you get one cat, you need to get two cats. I'll give you $200 to get no cat. Frances Halliday aspires to become a dancer and have a successful enough career to pay her bills. I was wondering if there were any more classes at the school that I could teach. I'm a little... I'm kind of broke. All while she has to deal with her best friend slash roommate moving to Tribeca while she resides in Brooklyn, arguably the hipster capital of the world. That's f***ing bullshit. Come on, Sophie. No, you're bullshit. And you're making me feel really bad right now. I want to love him if you love him, but you don't love him. Frances Halliday's story goes to show that sometimes being a hipster isn't as colorful as it seems. But it is as unconventional as you think. Frances, where do you live? Dragons. Is that a dorm? Yes. 
How the f do you get the chuggins? Number six, Lewin Davis, inside Lewin Davis. What are you doing? What? But what is that? What are you doing? Well, it's Mike's part. Don't do that. Through this Coen Brothers film, we are introduced to a beardy, broke folk musician who regularly sleeps on friends' couches and can't make a sustainable living off his musical pursuits living in NYC's Greenwich Village. In the entertainment business, you're not supposed to let your practice shit out. It ruins the mystique. But Lewin does what he can to rise above his reputation as a failure. Everything you touch turns to shit! His perseverance makes him seem like a hero, despite his cynical, sarcastic attitude and terrible luck. What's your name again? Oh, shit! No! No! He may live in a time of hippies, not hipsters, but Lewin Davis will never hesitate to accuse those who, you know, want to earn money and live comfortable lives of selling out. A classic hipster line if ever we've heard one. I don't see a lot of money here. Okay. Number five, Jamie Massey, While We're Young. Eisenstein's astonishing. I just watched Strike. Ah, I'm obsessed with Europe in the 20s, see? Portrayed by Adam Driver of HBO's Girls, this character arguably fits the hipster stereotype in terms of looks, interests, and general outlook on life. Why do you suddenly want to hang out with a couple of 25 year olds? Even if the film is centered on him and his on-screen girlfriend Amanda Seyfried's relationship with an older couple. Isaac and Benny are walking the tracks. Oh, have you done this? We walked through the subway tunnels of the D-Line last week. No. With vinyl records and VHS tapes everywhere at their house, not to mention Jamie's tendency to use a vintage typewriter. You could say this aspiring documentary filmmaker slash member of the band Cookie Opus fits the hipster stereotype fairly well. I need to buy a new desk. You should come with me to the lumber yard. We'll make one. A whole desk? It's much cheaper than buying one, see? Number four, Nick O'Leary, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Are you off duty? This isn't a cab. Are you off duty? It's not a cab, my friend, I promise you. Between making mixtapes in an attempt to win back his cheating ex-girlfriend and being the straight bassist in a queer core band, this native of Hoboken, New Jersey, played by Michael Sarah, instead bonds with a girl who asks him to be her boyfriend for five minutes. And is essentially his musical soulmate. I was the one that got her into it. Where's Fluffy? Nick isn't the only hipster character Sarah has played in his career. Look at movies like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World for reference. Yeah, I guess it'd be cool if cool people started wearing our t-shirt. But it's probably his most explicitly hipster role to date. You know, I had a bootleg of Black Carnage before anybody else ever heard it. Like, I, I think I was the first person outside of the band to ever hear that song. Number three, Tom Hansen, 500 Days of Summer. Want some, uh... Uh, it's not champagne. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Although his eventual ex-girlfriend, Summer, was also in contention for this list, it's our Smith-loving protagonist who gets the nod instead. Smith? Thanks in part to his love of indie music and his misinterpretation of the movie The Graduate, this character, portrayed by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, has a very unrealistic view on love which carries over into his relationship with Summer. Giant sunglasses, tattoos, handbags with little dogs in them. Who okayed this? You see, he wants his love affairs to feel like the lyrics to that Morrissey song he's blasting out of his hipster headphones. Nothing's going on. We're just... What? We're just what? We're just... No! Don't! Hold that with me. But as he'd learned painfully, liking the same things isn't enough of a foundation for a lasting relationship. You're married. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, huh? Number two, William Miller, Almost Famous. He's a very important writer. He knows Esther Bangs. He was a hipster before hipsters were a thing, the mark of a true hipster. Do you smoke? No. But uh, I, I grow it. Based on the film's director, Cameron Crowe, this aspiring rock journalist gets the opportunity of a lifetime when he's offered the chance to follow up-and-coming band Stillwater on the road. Not only that, he's getting paid by Rolling Stone to write about it. After his sister assures him that one day he'll be cool, he makes all the right moves to get there as he grows up. I'm, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Opening his mind to new things and experiences, and giving honest and thoughtful opinions about music. Especially early Lou Reed versus the new stuff. Hey, you like Lou Reed? The early stuff. 
before we unveil our number one pick. Here are some honorable mentions. Hey, Flea. Wicked Tiger. He looks proud. I swiped it from Ms. Rancic's lawn. You don't even bother showing up for interviews. What is it that you want from me, huh? What is it? You want me to get a job on the line for the next 20 years until I'm granted leave with my gold-plated watch and my balls full of tumors because I surrendered the one thing that means shit to me? You know, it's not like I'm some modern punk dickhead. It's obviously a 1977 original punk rock look. But you must be the count. I am he. I wonder what that makes me, the king. Or the clown. It's like when you say your name over and over again in the mirror, and after a while, it sounds crazy. So I'm guessing you've never been high before. Oh, and the label guys just kept saying more lock and low, but it's, it's just so much better if they're just skinny and nerdy like they came in, you know? Number one, Rob Gordon, High Fidelity. Did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music? He may not have a very good understanding of the opposite sex, but if we're talking about his taste in music and culture, he's undeniably hip. All time. Top five most memorable breakups. Rob Gordon obsessively makes top five lists of just about everything, from music to breakups. Not to mention he makes mixtapes and judges people based on their taste. Sig Sig, Sputnik, Breakbeats, Serge Gainsbourg. What are you guys, stealing for other people? No, those are for us. His attitude might seem snobby, but he can back it up. He knows what's in and isn't afraid to share his opinions. I get by because of the people who make a special effort to shop here. Mostly young men who spend all their time looking for deleted Smith singles, an original, not re-released underline, Frank Zappa album. Plus, only a true hipster would wear sweaters like that. Now, if only Rob's expertise in music carried over into the dating world. He slept with somebody else. What? While she, Laura, was pregnant. While I was pregnant. Do you agree with our list? Awesome. Awesome night. Who's your favorite hipster movie character of all time? I'm so embarrassed. I'm not a real person yet. With new top tens published every day. Be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Best decision I ever made. I'm fine.